from the second annual Columbus, Indiana Pride Festival. I've got Erin Bailey with me. She's an organizer of the festival. And from what I hear, the original creator of it? Yes. Where did the idea come for then to have it in Columbus and, and to pull it off in such a way? I'm from Columbus. So last year I was a senior at uh, Columbus Signature Academy. And so we have to do a senior project in order mm -hmm. to graduate. So I was like, what do we not have in Columbus? <laughs> I was like, oh my God, we have to have a pride festival. And it's turned into this big festival. You had it last year. Tell me a little about what you learned then from what happened last year. It's a pretty big group yeah, from what I heard. It was. I didn't think it was going to be like as big as it was. And it got like really big and lots of people showed up. And so that was really awesome. So we decided to do it again this year. We're going to do it again next year. Awesome. So yeah. What's your plan then for this year? What can folks expect if they didn't get to go last year but have it on their calendar now? It's actually in a different spot. Last year it was downtown on 4th Street. This year it's on the Library Plaza. So mm -hmm. it'll be really fun. We have a lot of vendors and we're going to have a drag show and different performers. So yeah, it's going to be a really good time. A lot of folks getting involved. I imagine you've got a good team of volunteers as well. Yes. Uh, different businesses getting involved too in yeah, Columbus. Yeah, definitely. What, what, what along those lines is happening? Um, I'm bringing pride flags downtown to Columbus uh, today and I'm going to go around to the different businesses and be like, hey, do you want to put these up mm -hmm. and just show that like different businesses in Columbus support like the LGBT. Well, and that was a question I wanted to ask you, of course, being in, in specifically in Columbus, but looking at the state as a whole, tell me what your take is uh, on the temperature of Indiana when it comes to the LGBTQ community. Are we doing well? Do we have a long way to go? Um, I think we're getting there. It's being more progressive, but definitely not like as good as it could be. Mm -hmm. Back in 2000, I think it was a lot different than it is now, but mm -hmm. just through um, people being more open-minded and realizing that everyone's human just really helps. Opposition wise to this festival you haven't had too many big hurdles then? No definitely not. Especially as it gets bigger and bigger I imagine yeah. that you're making a bigger footprint <laughs> on the city uh, and hoping to make an impact then th that's the question that I have of course is what goal do you have for this festival in the long run? I just want to, pe to be able to make people know that um, even though we are in Indiana and it's typically a more conservative state that they're still welcome so even if it just affects like a few people and a few people come like at least it's impacted them. That sounds great. You mentioned a drag show. You mentioned a couple of vendors there. Uh, is it an all day thing all afternoon? It goes till four. So 12 to four. Okay. Great. Folks can get more information. Of course, you have a website or are using social media to do mm -hmm. this. We have a website and we're using uh, Facebook and we have Instagram as well. Well, well, fingers crossed for good weather for you since a lot of this is going to be outside at Library Plaza. But congratulations on pulling off a festival, being so, you so young much. and doing it the second year in a row. Just that is impressive. Thank you. Awesome. Nice to meet you. You too. Marcus Bailey has that forecast to see what's coming up in the next couple of days. That's right. And focusing on obviously today 